Yeah, very good, Herb, very good. You never cease to amaze, always pleasantly so. And now, the man with the greatest eyes this side of the Rockies. He can read from papers that small, poems that long. He can bound tall buildings in a single leap and stop speeding trains and write wonderful poetry. Please come up into him. <laughs> uh, first of all, kind of correction, like without these glasses, I wouldn't be able to do this. <laughs> just describing me. So um, I'll be starting off with this entry that I just composed earlier um, in honor of Andrew and in honor of Andrew Parkin and Hong Kong, in particular the language situation that they're having there right now. It's an, it's an ethery, by the way. Word, island, Cantonese, an invasion, outside, arrival, national, unity. Simplified means bastardized. Defend, particularity. Imposition, cloth under greatness, resistance, just labeled public nuisance. And so I also and, and I have a, like the one that, you know, I like what I'm sort of like known for here. Um, so I'll be reading a poem that's in a way travel related. It's sort of like a thing that we're having here in this poetic justice. Airplanes. Airplanes fly over my head like folks from downtown, walking to and away from their destinations on a busy, everyday blue day and black night. One wonders where they're going, what they look like, what they look like inside. What do their reception halls look like? Are they sleek, curved in ice metal gray? Do they look brick-like, brutalist? Are they carpeted in green or red? What mode to move into the wider destination? Some 21st century rail contraption? Or a four-wheeled sojourn talking, taking about four hours? There are places to satisfy one's belly, to obtain some object at temporary satisfaction? Or they vary tacky, eye-opening. How about their interiors? For sure, I know of seats with spaces so wide you can casually chat with a stranger where you can relax your back so far as the stranger behind permits. Where it's a woe to have wide elbows when dining time. The small glowing mirror in front of you provides the only distraction, pastime. One wonders what it's like further to the front further above the head. One's own cubicle, capsule, complete with bed, blanket, dining, and writing, and typing table. TV screen with surround sound? Or at least there is considerable distance between seats indeed. And what about the destination, after the destination? Conglomerated, spacious, lively, lonely? where one can feel comfortably unknown or completely alone. It looks like I'd like to pack my bags and depart, but unfortunately only in my head. Thank you.